things. Today I've got a little fun gadget to look at and it's in a bag. What it is, is a little thermometer. The label says it can measure from minus 20 to 100 degrees C. Um, it will take voltage supply for from anything from 4 to 28 volts and it's got all the cables connected and it's got the NTC thermistor over here a really nice potted one in a in a metal case in a metal can but it's a little module that uh, shows temperature and it came from this website uh, it's a IC, icstation.com it's a ICs and robot gadgets uh, with free shipping website and these guys actually contacted me and asked me whether I wanted uh, something to review on my channel which I happily accepted because why not um, I tend to buy all this stuff on eBay anyways and yeah so they've sent me I told them that uh, well choose something and they sent me this thermometer which actually um, when I got it I thought that's uh, brilliant because uh, I've already know what I already know what I want to do with it, but let's have a look if we can um, find it somewhere here. Uh, so let's look for thermometer. And can we see? There you go. That's this one. Yes, that's exactly that. So it's a 0.36 inch red electronic thermometer, LED display, NTC, metal, waterproof sensor, DC 4 to 28 volts. And they've got a few pictures of the items, but we will have a look ourselves. So how do I close the... There we go. This is how it looks switched on. 20 millimeters tall by 32 millimeters wide. And let's see what they say about this. Special NTC metal waterproof probe. And that's the probe over here. I tell you what, this waterproof probe makes it quite a lot more useful than um, any regular thermometer. You can use it, for example, as a temperature monitor sensor for your aquarium. And if you look uh, for aquarium thermometers, digital ones, they will they usually cost three times the amount of this one. So I've got here a little power supply and I've connected the meter to it. At the moment the output is zero volts and we're gonna slowly increase it, see at what point uh, will it actually kick in. So it claims to be operational from four volts. So let's go up, okay. Oh, that's a, quite a bit less. Let's go back down. So 2.48 volts, nothing. There you go, about three volts. Just a line on one of the segments uh, kick in. So let's go a little bit higher. Okay, 3.15 volts. We've got three lines on three segments. Okay, about 3.3 .3 volts uh, it kicked in, so that's quite a bit low. That's good. And it's drawing very little current at this moment. It's less than 10 milliamps. The meter is not even registering it. So if we go a little bit higher, there you go. At 4, 4 volts, um, it draws just about 10 milliamps. And the screen is very nicely uh, readable, oh, of course, because it's a LED. It is 21. 21.1 21 millimeters, I guess, just about 21.1 wide or tall, and 32.4 wide. Mind you, it's a little bit thicker uh, at where the PCB is going through, where uh, just under the sticker over here, I can feel there is a bit of a bump, um, and the faceplate of it it's a little bit wider so that's to uh, to allow for easy panel mounting um, that's yeah you've got an extra millimeter two millimeters actually uh, this way and yeah 34.9 millimeters across so 
30, 35 and 23. Now, mind you with those, when you mount them in, you have to actually take the whole guts out of it, push the plastic in and then squeeze the back back inside because otherwise those tabs, they, they're not going to flex because they're pressing on the LCD panel. That's a common thing with, with those panel meters. What I've done, I've uh, took my multimeter with a K-type thermocouple and taped it with just some masking tape um, to the thermistor to see what sort of difference are we gonna get and it's there or thereabouts to be honest and if I hold it that should increase in temperature a little bit both are showing temperature in Celsius there is no option to change this to Fahrenheit it shows the temperature accurately uh, from what I can tell um, at least um, unless both of them are wrong which is unlikely it seems what I've noticed that the thermocouple reaction is a lot quicker than the th uh, NTC thermistor over here and that's nothing essentially wrong with this thermometer it's that's how the thermistor works and it it will react quite a bit slower and what I've got over here is a bowl of water and ice and from physics we should know that uh, a mixture of water and ice um, should be more or less at about zero degrees centigrade. This sort of uh, thermistor, it will take quite a bit of time to adjust in temperature, especially it's been encapsulated, so it's waterproof, which is a bonus, but it's, uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of thermal mass, so it takes a moment to actually cool down. Now, I'm not sure how will that affect the performance of the thermocouple, because that's not exactly waterproof. Um, it's just bare metal wires, but we can see that yeah, it's keeping up. Yeah, thermocouple is stuck at two degrees, and this is fluctuating between one and 0.8 degree, which is good. That's that's to be expected. You know that zero degree C um, of uh, mixture of water and ice. It's subject to a lot of factors. It's it's the pressure and all kinds of things. So. Yeah, this is this is close enough. I think for a hobby use, it's fantastic. It's it's definitely good enough. We're done with ice. Let's see how quickly will it recover. So, because they're stuck together, thermocouple will not take lead over here. But if I took those apart, the thermocouple would have heat up quite a lot quicker, and that's because there is a thermal mass in the in the thermistor over here. So let me hold it in my hands and let's see what sort of temperature I can get it up to. That's about the 30, 34 degrees point something. And again, both, uh, both indicate pretty much the same temperature. I've got the soldering iron set to the lowest temperature I can, which is 150 degrees. And I'm not sure how accurate that is, but uh, hopefully it's not going to be high enough to cause any damage. So we do have temperature rising. Mind you, I'm just heating up a tiny point on the case um, rather than uh, the entire surface of it. So when it's immersed in a, either in a liquid or maybe placed in a hole with thermal compound, compound around it, it will cause the temperature to go quite a lot quicker. At this moment, this is not really working very well because I'm heating up the uh, NTC thermistor and the thermocouple is here. And yeah, if I place it here, the temperature will rise quickly. But again, it's it's not even out on both of them. So let's try something else. Um, I've got a hairdryer over here, uh, which seems to be getting really hot. Uh, at least that's what I think. Um, so I'm gonna shove this in and we'll see. I'll shove it just straight into the outlet and we'll see what sort of temperature will we get on both of those. Now mind you, this will be a little bit loud, so be warned. There we go. Um, that was both of them and you could see sometimes the temperature was off uh, there was a difference between the two that only depends on how was I holding at what angle was I holding this in the outlet of the um, of the hairdryer but um, yeah 
the room is warm now actually and it's it's showing the same temperature so I guess it works hey okay, enough of this measuring let's take it apart actually and see what's inside so we can disconnect the sensor okay it's got quite a long cable actually almost just under a meter roughly estimated and the thermistor in size is five millimeters in diameter and is two centimeters uh, long, long wise so two centimeters by five in diameter there is a little bit of extra PCB sticking out over here so yeah if you had something I would trim it if I was going to mount it in a panel otherwise it could be difficult to stick it back in but now we need to take it out of that and I need to be careful now this plastic feels like ABS which is good because I've come across um, another panel meter, it was actually a voltmeter that I used in my power supply and it was made out of something else and when I tried to bend those tabs open it broke because ABS, ABS is quite a bit flexible there we go and here is the meter and oh dear we will not be able to see what chip is underneath how disappointing and we've got the a little diffuser if you're wondering it should be the uh, smooth side on the inside and the porous side on the outside that's how they are supposed to be in there but I'm a little bit annoyed that I can't take it apart a little bit further I guess we could desolder this let's take the wires off first I'm wondering what's best approach in here and I think the best one will be to flood this with uh, actually so actually flood this with solder and heat it up evenly and pull the whole thing out so let's do the operation this way let's actually flood all the pins over here like so there we go and we are inside we just need to clean all this thing up now and we've got uh, 8S003F3P6 which is a um, ST branded uh, STM 16 megahertz um, 8-bit microcontroller what you can see at the bottom right now is a in circuit programming header so uh, clearly this can be programmed um, while uh, built in on the board itself and going up we've got uh, 7163H which I'm not sure what it is but I think think this could be a voltage regulator because the microcontroller can do only up to five and a half volts but this clearly I will do up to 28 volts it claims so there we go that's uh, that's been cleaned up so now it fits uh, just as intended into the holes and I would have just soldered this back up but I messed up the trace uh, how silly of me First I need to figure out which trace is this uh, because it goes under the voltage rig but I think it's this trace over here from this resistor ladder. Okay I've got a tiny bit of copper over here but this is way too close for me to solder next to, um, next to that. Have a look at the solder tip in comparison. Yeah I'm, I'm much too, uh, too big of a risk of shorting onto the uh, tab of the voltage regulator so what I'm going to I'm going to actually tap directly onto that resistor and I think that's going to be a better approach okay I had to change the tip on my soldering iron to a tiny one which normally is uh, quite a bit useless and this is the first time ever I'm soldering under this camera Okay, that should do it, a little bit fresh solder. Okay, 
Okay, yeah. That's holding. Okay, I've soldered that little cable to the leg of the, uh, the display first. And now I just have to solder back up everything. And I'm not going to solder this one because it doesn't connect to anything on the side. But that's the one that I've soldered the little wire to. Okay, will this still work? Well, there is a true test of robustness. Uh, me breaking it and fixing it and see if that still works. So I've connected it uh, back to the thermistor and let's apply some voltage. I'm just going to crudely connect it to a 12 volt power supply and it appears all good. I'm not sure, hold on, because I'm not making very good connection here with the power supply. Um, let's make sure all the uh, all the segments are working. So okay, last one is working super fine. Let's wait for eight. Come on, give me an eight. Yes. So I'm quite sure that's gonna be it. That it's not going to go um, wrong because all the segments over here light up. And the last, uh, the damaged pin was on this side. So it had to be with one of those two segments and those work perfectly fine they light up as number eight so hey I've managed to break something and fix it and um, I've also noticed that this is quite common with all those LED panels uh, LED seven segment displays in panel meters there is always the protective film left on top of them which I normally take off because it's not meant to stay on here but no one ever bothers taking it off because it's yeah, it doesn't make a difference, but you can take it off. And this is the uh, the proper surface that you're meant to use. So there you go. I think that's about it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this uh, breaking video and um, a quick review of this nice little modules. Uh, by the way, I th uh, the guys at uh, IC Station said that they're gonna give me a coupon code for if you want to buy something from them it's gonna be in the description the usual thing it, uh, it's probably 10% off from what I remember so yeah if if you want to head, o head on um, over to them I I do recommend it though that this stuff they shipped me came quite quick and um, on some of the stuff that I checked them out they're actually cheaper than eBay so why not if you're in need of some weird and wonderful modules head over there I think that's it for today so thanks a lot for watching subscribe for more random stuff and for the time being take care